hello everyone welcome to my channel uh welcome back to accounting for real uh and um today i want to get started uh on a few things where well, i have a little uh i'm in the kitchen so you're in the kitchen this morning with accounting for real and i'm uh i'm gonna do a little uh today i'm gonna show you how i make my tacos and what i put in my tacos and then um, I also have my little my lesson for the day. So I have my I usually do I use my taco shells, and I have here some I put ragu sauce in my tacos. Uh, also I do a little cheese. Uh, and then this is a salsa verde. This is Taco Bell brand. So. And then I have me some, um, I'm going to put some kidney beans in my tacos. And then I also have me some fresh greens that I made. Uh, fresh, these are cooked. So these are some greens I made. So I put these on my tacos. And also probably, I may season them with just a little uh, seasoned salt. So, oh, and also, I uh, want to put a little bit of corn in my um, tacos. A little bit of corn. So, I have corn, uh, tacos, uh, cheese. This is two types of cheese. I believe it's, well, it's more than two. This is a Monterey, Monterey Jack, sharp white cheddar, uh, sharp cheddar. Mild cheddar, uh, the cheese, cheese with cheese with uh salsa, and it has cheese with salsa. So it's three three different types of cheeses. And I said I have my um my spaghetti sauce, and these are the taco shells. Mm -hmm. So this is the first thing that I do is. I want to boil my corn. First thing I want to do, see my water. My water is nice and piping hot. So what I do, I want to put my corn in there. So, I'm going to put my corn in there. So, I'll put my corn in there. Put my corn in, let my corn boil a little bit. And this is going to be the pan for my sauce. So, my sauce and my kidney beans are mixed together in here. sauce, my sauce and my, uh, yes, my kidney beans and my sauce, uh, my uh, ragu sauce, ragu sauce will go in this pan right here. But while my corn is cooking, I want to start my lesson. Okay. Uh, okay, today's lesson is going to be centered around... Uh, today's lesson is going to be centered around an accounting information system. Okay, uh, so in other words, you have your business, you have your um, you have your uh, business name, you have your uh, form of business, you know, your corporation, your uh, sole proprietorship, your partnership. So you have your business name, you have your form of business, you have your niche. And whatever niche you choose, it could be, as I said earlier, you could be uh, marketing, skincare, cream, 
uh, lotion, you know, different things of that nature, uh, hair care products uh, for sensitive uh, people with sensitive scalp for alopecia or uh, somebody, you know, their hair may be falling out. So you have that. So you have your business name, your business, your form of business, if instance you run the LLC, uh, cor corporate LLC, limited liability, uh, in case you run into any problems, you know, you can, uh, uh, it will save, save your, your personal assets. Then they won't be able to get into your, if somebody sue you, they won't be able to get into your uh, personal assets. So you have your, your uh, business name, your location, your target market, your brand, you're building your brand, you're working on your brand, and just, you know, you have everything you need. So you have everything. So now you're building your brand, and while you're building your brand, you want to build an uh, information system. So you want to build an information system within your organization, see? So an information system, an effective, efficient uh, information system, in your uh, organization will help you bring in that necessary information that can keep you abreast of your competitors, keep you on top uh, of your customers, keep you in line with everything you need, everything you do in your organization. Require, uh, it counts on uh, have, you having a nice uh, information system. So in other words, an information system you have an information system set up. It's, it's a system that uh, helps you put in your information. What information do you need? you need? You need information. When you're running a business, you need information about your competitors. What are my competitors doing? I need information about my customers. Uh, how can I keep my customers coming back? I need information. Uh, you just When you're running a business, you need information. Just You need just about any type of information in your uh, organization to keep you on top of things. You want to stay on top of your competitors, on top of your competitors. Say for instance, you, you want to, uh, you need some information on, um, in other words, what, you know, you benchmarking, you need information on what are my competitors doing that's in the same field that I'm in? What are the trends in the market for the type of business that I'm in? I need various types of information. I need information flowing in my uh, organization, just as, just like my cash flows in and out. I need information to flow in and out in my organization, in my corporation. I need to, uh, I need information that can keep me on top of my creditors. I mean, uh, yeah, my, yeah, my creditors too. It need to keep me on top of my creditors and my competitors. In other words, you, your suppliers, your, uh, I mean, I guess when I say credit creditors, uh, I mean, I guess you could say because the creditors and your banks and your, uh, your, uh, you know, your credit unions, your banks, and your um, auditors and uh, security exchange commission. You might need information on, you know, those type of things too. Uh, so, an information system. So, in order to develop an information system, uh, first of all, you want to, you want to, uh, the first is four phases. It's a steps necessary to develop an information system. So the first step is system analysis. A system analysis, a system analysis is concerned primarily with the detailed examination of the user or of the user needs and and the extent to which they are being met. So in other words, uh, system analysis. You want to analyze your system. In other words, what type of uh, information system do you want to build? It depend, It depends on the the company that type of company that you're running. Are uh, you running a manufacturing business? Are you making all your products? Or are you, are you uh, just uh, wholesaling? Are you wholesaling products? And then you want to sell them to various, sell your products to various retailers? Or are you providing a service? Uh, so that depends on, those things depend on what type of information systems you want to build. So in other words, that's, that's why I say concern primarily with the detailed examination of user needs. Who's going to be using this information system? Who are you going to be doing business with? So that's the first one. And that is uh, the system analysis phase. So you're building an information system within your organization that will bring in that necessary uh, information in your organization to keep you up with your competitors, to keep you just doing your day-to-day -day operations, to keep you moving, moving forward positively 
efficiently and effectively into the future. And so then we also we have a system survey. A uh, system survey, process that briefly examines user information needs, existing ways in which those needs are being addressed, and the feasibility of developing or acquiring an information system to address those needs. So process that briefly examines user information. In user information needs, existing ways in which those needs are being addressed. So uh, user information needs. What does the user need? What are the needs of the user when it comes to this information system? So once you find out um, the, the information that the user needs, then, then, then you'll figure out the ways uh, that you can address those uh, needs. So in other words, say process that process, the system survey, process, process that briefly examines user information needs, existing ways in which those needs are being addressed, and the feasibility of developing or acquiring an information system to address those needs. So in other words, you're acquiring an information system for what needs? What what are the needs within your organization? And as I said before, you're a manufacturing uh, company or you are a uh, you're just a wholesaler. What what are your needs within that within your organization? What type of business are you running? Are you are you running? Are you making fur coats? Or are you just marketing fur coats so wholesaling them so you can sell them to your retailer, to, to various retailers throughout the country or throughout your state? Uh, so once uh, once you find out uh, your needs, so you are if you build an information system, the needs will come from within. What are your needs within your organization? And then also, what, what are the needs of your customers? What are the needs of your suppliers? So when you figure that out, why you... Those are the things that you have to deal with when you're building your information system within your organization. What type of information are we going to be bringing in? You know, that, that is a big determination, and that is very important to determine what type of information system you want to build. So that's the second phase, which be, would be the system survey. So you're doing a system survey. And the third one is system design. During the system design phase, the exact configuration of all hardware and software components is specified. So are you going to build a computer information system? What kind of computer information system system are you going to build? Are you working on building uh, mainframes, supercomputers, mini computers, microcomputers, or uh, do you just want a regular uh, information system? It depends on the business that you are running. and in other words, if you need a larger, you need a mainframe, you need a larger computer mainframe or a uh, supercomputer, those type of computers can process many applications uh, at one time. So that's why they call them supercomputers and mainframes. Those are the bigger, large, larger computers that are very price, pricey. So when you have a, a whole lot of... Uh, you have a whole lot of, in other words, you can multitask. You can multitask uh, with the mainframes and supercomputers. So that's why I said it depends on what type of uh, business you're running. You have a big time uh, business like, uh, I don't know, the post office, uh, uh, IRS, IRS, or uh, a uh, large tech firm, then you may need a, a, a larger system a larger information system because without information coming in and going out of the organization how are you going to know how to do things how are you going to get that information that knowledge uh, to you know uh, keep on top of the be on top of your competitors you want to know what your competitors are doing you want to know how to deal with your customers you want you want to know what your customers need and what your customers want what what do my suppliers need what do they want so that's the system system design. And then the last one is the system implementation. The sim system implementation, that's uh, the, I, the information system analyst implements the plans formulated during system design. So in other words, the system, the systems are the system analyst. So in other words, they have certain people that's uh, qualified to do these certain jobs with these computers. So 
In other words, a system analyst, in other words, when she's form or he or she is formulating the plan uh, for the information system, that's that's the uh, design phase. In other, in other words, uh, what type of um, that's a uh, system implement implementation. What type of uh, yeah, as I said, what type of information system do you need? Uh, do you want a uh, information system? I mean, you know, because you can have a small organization or you can have a large organization. So that would depend on the type of information system. Information system. I don't know if it should be plural or systems. I guess it should be systems because you will need more than one. So information systems, make it plural. And um, it depending on, that really depends on the type of business that you're running and um, the type of business that you're running and the um, or the size of the organization that you're running. That has a lot to do with the, the information system, system that you are building. Okay, so we got an application development. So an app, application development, that's a job for, uh, I guess, a software developer. So uh, application develop, development, uh, that's, that, that, that deals with uh, building software, creating software. So uh, programmers, programmer analysts, systems analysts, systems designer, computer, computer professionals, who create create application software so programmers and these are just the job titles for uh, uh, you know uh, workers that uh, create the software software that uh, run 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 on the information system so if you have a, you create an information system you definitely need software and hardware so those are the jobs that deal with making the software and uh, there's some uh, here on another. So let me check out my corn. See, my corn is boiling. So I let it cook on a little bit more. Top back on. So that's the corn. And these are the items that will be going in my tacos. Okay. So then we also have a computer operations manager. They operate, a computer operations manager operates a large information processing facility. Typically, these such facilities have one or more large computer systems. Let's take the top off so the uh, water won't come. I'll turn it down a little bit. Okay, so computer operations manager operates a large information processing facility. Typically, such facilities have one or more large computer systems. Uh, and peripheral, per, peripheral equipment housed in a central location. So in other words, they have a per, peripheral, that's like printers and fax machines. Those, those are like add-ons. So they have a large, a large information processing facility. So that, that is a computer operator, operations manager. And so let's just, uh, Computer operations manager, and then we have uh, they say large databases, thousands of so they deal with computer operate computer operations manager. They also have large databases, thousands of application programs, dozens dozens or hundreds of employees, and significant amounts of batch processing characteristic characteristics such a uh, character. Uh, no, it said significant amounts of batch processing char characterize such installation. Okay, it characterizes such installation. So, in other words, they have a whole lot that they deal with. That's a computer operations manager. So, in other words, they deal with dozens, they deal with thousands of applications, dozens, of, dozens or hundreds of employees, and significant uh, significant amounts of batch processing characteristics. Characterize or batch process and characterize such installations. So in other words, they have a large job. They have a big job to do. So when they when they, when they are dealing with these computers, these information systems, they have to know what they are doing. So that's why they have certain jobs, uh, certain job titles, and they get certain pay rates, certain pay rates 
Uh, so they dealing with hundreds of employees and uh, dozens or hundreds of employees. So that's a big job. That is a computer operate computer operations manager. So then I have so when you're dealing with a smaller organization, smaller organizations, the title of network administrator. So sometimes when they're dealing with these information systems, these different jobs, you got a computer operations manager and you have a network administrator. So right here, a smaller organization, the title of network administrator usually applies to management of a local area network. So local area network. So they deal with a small area of computers. So in other words, networking computers, when it, computers are network, networking together, they share information. Uh, you had a client, and you had a server. So the, the clients are accessing uh, data from the server. And usually, usually, usually the server is in one central location. Sometimes companies have maybe uh, another office building or something where they had their a central computer located. Uh, so it says the title of network administrator usually applies the management of a local area network. Such networks connect a half dozen to a few hundred computers and one or more uh, shared databases. So in other words, uh, computers can access information from a normal computer, usually uh, from a um, uh, a, a server, you have a server, then you have a client computers. So in other words, you're working in a company, you might be one of the uh, personnel working on a client computer, and you might have about 100 employees, uh, 20 to 100, or, you know, could be less than that. But it says such networks connect a half dozen to a few hundred computers and one or more shared databases. So that means they can share databases. In other words, you might want to, you might be working on uh, a project, and your coworker might be working on a project, and you all, you both might need to use the same file. So you can access that same file from your computer, and your coworker can access the same file from his or her computer. So that's what they mean when they mean when they are talking about shared uh, databases. Uh, so that is that one. And then I have a, a network administrator responsible for the network infrastructure of a large distributed organization, a multinational corporation with dozens or hundreds of worldwide locations typically will possess a complex network to tie together its databases. So in other words, uh, and it said application software and computer hardware. The design, operation, and maintenance of such a network is a complex task requiring substantial and maintenance of such a network is a complex task requiring sex, uh, substantial technical expertise. It seems like I wrote the same sentence twice. Sorry about that. But in other words, a network administrator. Network administrator. So a network administrator, in other words, responsible for uh, the setup. So it says a network infrastructure. So a network uh, administrator is responsible for uh, the network infrastructure of a large distributed organization. So in other words, distributed means sharing files, sharing, sharing databases. In other words, you got uh, 10, 15, 20 employees. They all they all accessing their information from that same server in that central location. Uh, so that is a network administrator. So uh, next I have so next we have uh, let's talk about a, let's talk about the processor. The processor is a device in other words a processor and uh, one uh, your computer processor probably is your CPU, central processing unit. So that's where all your information, your data, and everything comes from. Your CPU, your central processing unit. Uh, central a processor is a device that performs data manipulation, manipulation and transformation functions. General purpose processor. 
It can execute many different instructions and many different sequences, sequences or combinations. So that's the processor. Uh, then we also have a special purpose processor that's designed to perform only one specific task. Although this processor may be capable of executing many types of, inf of uh, instructions, it can only execute them in one sequence. So that's a special purpose uh, uh, processor. So in other words, you're, running a, uh, you're working for a corporation, organization, or wherever you're working, and your job is to operate these uh, these uh, special purpose uh, uh, special purpose uh, processor. So in other words, uh, your your job title may be for you to work on one specific uh, task. And um, this, what you know, you may be doing. You may be working on one specific task, depending on uh, what your assignment uh, is for that particular day or that week or whenever or however long that you know your company, or your manager, or your supervisor, you know, however long they have you working on it. So it says it's only one specific task. Although this processor may be capable of executing many types of uh, instructions. It can only execute them in one sequence. So only one sequence. So so that's that one. And then I have, uh, let's see what, let's see, okay. So this one, this one I have right here, this is just a little chart that I made. So you have your CPU, your primary storage, your secondary storage. And it says uh, the CPU is the heart and brain of the computer. The heart and brain of the computer, the central processing unit, and this is the uh, 1010 unit. I guess this is the user, in other words, somebody accessing accessing the computer, and that's what they'll be. And so let me read over here. In other words, the you have the primary storage that holds programs currently being executed. So in other words, when you operate in your computer, uh. And, and you'll start off, uh, your information will go into primary storage. And then it'll come over to secondary storage. Storage program uh, process, it says stores programs and they're not currently executed. So you start off with your primary storage, then you, um, once it starts uh, processing, it'll come over to the secondary storage. And everything goes into your CPU, your central processing unit. So we have that. And then we have uh, this is networking. So now let me talk a little bit about uh, communication, networking, and using different communication devices. Uh, so we have a system bus. System bus, communication lines that serve as a primary pathway for data, data transmission among computer system devices. A, uh, yes, a powerful CPU requires a high capacity system bus to keep it uh, supplied with instructions and data from primary uh, storage. So in other words, you got a system bus. That's the system bus. System bus communication lines that serve as a primary pathway for data transmission among computer system devices. So in other words, when you operate your computer, in other words, everything goes through the bus. A system bus. Because it says a communication lines that serve as a primary pathway for data. So that's 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 your that's our pathway for data. It goes through the system bus uh, in a computer, on a computer. So that's the primary source of data. So a powerful, a powerful CPU. So in other words, a bus located in your CPU, your central processing unit. A powerful CPU requires a high capacity system bus. So in other words, you have a computer. Some of these computers don't, uh, you know, might not be as powerful as others. So that's why you can see that in the cost. So in other words, they're saying that a powerful CPU a powerful CPU requires a high capacity system bus. In other words, you gotta have uh, 
Sometimes you might be able to get a computer for five or six hundred dollars, but nine times out of ten, it might not have no powerful uh, CPU. Might not have a powerful C, uh, central processing unit. So that's why I'll be wondering why the computer costs so much. Some of them be two thousand, three thousand dollars. So I see why now they have that powerful uh, system CPU and a powerful bus. So uh, other computers uh, probably would be on that line. Would be we have our micro computers, our mini computers, and our mainframes. So that may be on the line of having a powerful uh, CPU. So a micro, micro computer, a computer system designed to meet a single user's information processing needs. A mini computer uh, is designed to provide information processing for multiple users, uh, multiple users and, users, and to execute many application programs simultaneously. That's what I was saying about the mainframes and the uh, supercomputers. So in other words, you can execute many uh, programs simultaneously. So that's a mini computer. Then we had a mainframe. Mainframe computer system, uh, they can handle the information processing needs of a large number of users and applications. So in other words, you can go on there and then you got a mainframe, those are the big joints. Big computers, you have, you can, uh, you can, um, you can make, uh, in other words, you can multitask. You can have, it, it says, large, a large number of users and applications. So in other words, you have a whole lot of things to do. You can do all those uh, on those mainframes. You see, system that can handle the information processing needs of a large number of users. So in other words, you got a mainframe, your co depending on what kind of company you have. Some companies, you don't need a mainframe. Uh, it depends on how big the company is. And say, for instance, you got a, you run a company with a thousand, two, three thousand workers, then you may need a mainframe because everybody on computers. Everybody need to access the network. Everybody need to um, be on a computer. Then you have a supercomputer, perform large amounts of mathematical computation as quickly as possible. So that's where you will need a, so this is, a, these are the ones I looked up right here. So we have a mini, micro, and mainframe. And then uh, the uh, supercomputer, uh, supercomputers perform large amounts of mathematical computation. So those are the supercomputers. So uh, then it's just, um, I want to go into uh, networking. Uh, I want to go into uh, something called topologies, networking topologies. So this is the star topology. But well, first I want to just touch base right here. Uh, what is a web browser? The client side software that's used to display content from the World Wide Web. So in other words, when you go to the internet, you type in a, a web browser, uh, the address. I might type in my website, which is uh, um, uh, what beauty for real beauty for real that www.beauty for real that big cartel that com so that's my website for my uh retail my retail sales so i type that in and it takes me to my website and it says uh, the class size software that's used to display content for the world wide web so i'm on that's going to take me to the world wide web well the world wide the world wide web it's just a network of networks, network, 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 all nothing but connected networks, information from everywhere. So that's what a network is. A network is base, basically uh, a network allows you to share information. Uh, so topologies, physical layout of computers, cables, resources. We had a bus, we had the star, we had the ring. So then we have uh, what is RAM, random access memory, random access memory, Ran uh, memory cards or uh, chips on a PC that provides working space for the CPU to use when running applications, providing network services, and so on. So random access memory. So that memory is uh, short term. 
whenever you type in something in a computer and you might see it uh, you might see it for a short time and the random access memory is uh, basically a short term memory because you had the memory you had the random access access memory and then you had a uh, you know you have your storage secondary storage and your primary storage and then you have your uh, uh, your um, you know your um, your basic memory in other words the memory that, that holds your information for a long time so you have the random access memory you have your uh, you have your uh, secondary storage and your primary storage so in other words it's, uh, I'll just read that with the secondary storage the secondary secondary storage does not um uh in other words you can't you can access it but it doesn't uh it's not available right away but in other words the primary storage is the one that will be available right from the jump street in other words when you first type your information in the computer it's going to go to your primary storage first uh so Networking, as I said, networking, sharing information. Uh, then we have a, a server, a computer that shares resources across the network. So that's why I say the server, you have a client computer and you have a server computer. I might be uh, one working on a client computer and someone else might be working on a server computer. So they, they, if I'm working this client computer, they can access information from the client. Uh, so then let me talk about, let me see if I corn cooking. So what I want to do now is, so since my corn, since my corn is cooking, it seems like it might be just about done. Then I have my sauce. So sometimes I take my sauce. Take my sauce. I put a little sesame. Since the sauce is uh, a lot of times, see it's thick. Sometimes it's thick like that. Sometimes I like to add a little. So what I do, so sometimes uh, a sauce is a little thick like this, sometimes a sauce is a little thick, then I usually like, because I like my, uh, I like my um, sauce. I like my sauce um, a little sweet, so sometimes I put sometimes I put a little sugar. So sometimes I put a little um, little sugar in mine. And I didn't put any margarine in there this time, but then also I have my uh, kidney beans that I do add. And see the kidney beans, but when they have a lot of that gook in there, I like to rinse that off. So what I do, see, once I rinse them all, see how they are like that, just plain, I rinse them all, 
as the Goya dark uh, kidney beans. So then I just put them down, turn it down a little bit. Put it. I usually just put them in my uh, See, my beans are all in my sauce. And, and also what I do, I have my uh, cheese, I have my cheese. Salsa, bird, verde taco cheese. So, also open them up like that. And, yeah. oh, smells divinely. So, what I do, take a little bit of cheese and just, uh, see, take a little bit of cheese like this and just put it on down in my, uh, take a little bit of cheese and put it on down in my, uh, my sauce and my beans. And I like a lot of cheese. I don't have to use the whole bag though. So. And also I got a little bit of a, uh, it's just a little bit of a uh, seasoning, uh, seasoned salt. I put a little bit down in my, just a little bit. In my uh, cheese and my uh, beans, I don't like a lot of salt, so. And then I have my uh, taco taco shells. So what I do? And I have my uh, plate. So what I want to do just finish the lesson first and then say this is a uh, stir that up so so I have my corn over here and then I have my beans and my see I have my beans and my cheese I put in there so I let that let that melt and simmer when I finish my lesson okay so Let's finish this on up. Okay, I think it's only a few left. So, we were, I talked earlier about the information system, and so this still this still, this is still dealing with the information system. It's an information system. So you know you run the company, you want to build an information system, and you just have to decide what type of company you have, what type of information system that you need, and you have to have the proper uh, workers. Uh, is in place for a particular job title, so they, you know, they'll be the ones running your information system. What type of information system do you want? So basically, an information system you are uh, sharing information. Once you get your information system complete within your corporation or your organization, you know, you already decide what type you want. So once you decide that, and once you have the proper workers in place with the particular job titles. That's building the information system. Then you want to know uh, how we're going to share this information. We're we're going to share this information through our uh, our networking. We're going to network. We're going to share information. We're going to share it through our star uh, topology, our bus topology, and our uh, rain topology. So in other words, I'm starting with the bus. Okay, this is basically how bus how a bus topology is set up. We have the bus topology. In other words, like these electronic signals. In other words, these computers in the network, they can share information. They share information and basically they probably these probably probably are the client computers. In other words, then it, it should be a server computer set up at probably at probably in another location. See computer connected along computers connected along a single cable segment. So in other words they got one single cable that they have connected and they can share information you know? so in other words uh you have a co-worker working on a uh a file 
you can work on all of these computers can work on the same file because they networking they're networking they're sharing sharing information sharing databases so that's the bus topology so let's see what it says it says when a computer has data to send as i said when it's sending data when a computer has data to send that data is addressed broken into packets and sent across the network as electronic signals so in other words you can send an electronic signal from one computer to the next you can share information in other words I need to use that file. My coworker is using that file. I need to use it. So when I send um, when I when I send certain information to retrieve that file, then it'll come to me. It'll come to my computer. So it says uh, when a computer has data to send. So in other words, you're sending data, you're receiving data, you're sharing information, you're networking. So uh, in a bus, only one computer can send information at a time. So in other words, only one computer in a bus network can send information at a time. So you, uh, you have a bus net, you have a bus topology set up. Uh, so only one uh, computer can send information at a time. So in other words, you need that file. You need that file from the server. Then, uh, or even you need to send information back to uh, the server, or you need to send information to a co-worker that's using another computer in another location then only one uh, computer can send information at a time see the more computers are attached to the bus the more uh, computers must wait to send data so if they have to wait to send data then in other words that is the type of thing that probably would slow your network down uh, bus topology is a passive passive topology uh, computers on the bus only listen for data being sent. They are not responsible for moving data from one computer to the next. Okay, so they're not responsible for moving computer, uh, 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 data from one computer to the next. In other words, you need to write and you, you can access your data from the server. So you won't be sending information from your, you know, one computer to the next. So that is the bus topology. Bus topology. So then we have we have the star topology. So you can always do a little more research and read up read up on this bus topology, star topology, and ring. So basically, these are networking devices. Basically, it's a setup. It's a setup of your computer system, your information system. How are you set it up? You set it up uh, like a bus topology. See how they set it up? You set it up with, let's see, one, one wire right here where the computers can share information. So it's a setup. It's a setup. It's a computer system setup. The information system that you're setting up in the beginning of your business, when you're organizing your business. So this is a star topology. It's used when the computers are connected by cable segment to a central hub. So in other words, you have a hub. When you see when you go to some of these uh, uh, organizations or even where you work at, you know they have a particular, they have a special room just for the hubs. And you have a room they got the hubs, and you got all the wires coming in and out, you know. So that's how they get uh, internet in uh, that building and different other buildings that they run. You know they can have they can just they can get in uh, internet internet access. They can have a building downtown and they have a couple buildings uptown, and that's how they get their information. With that central hub location, uh, is used when the computers are connected by cable segments to a central hub. Hub when the signal is sent from a computer, it is received by the hub and retransmitted down down every other cable segment to all other computers on the network. So in other words, all the computers on the network, um, when, when, when that signal is sent to the central hub, it says when the, when the, cent, when the signal uh, when the signal is sent to the central hub, um, the signal is sent from a computer and received by the hub, retransmitted down every other cable segment to all other computers on the network. It's used when the computers are connected by cable segments. 
uh, to a central hub. In other words, uh, I, I would assume that uh, this will, you know, probably a star topology would probably, probably be used for those large corporations that have, you know, they have a lot of, uh, in other words, they have a lot of computers on the network. In other words, you got, uh, uh, what's that, uh, Verizon, uh, uh, IRS, or <coughs> Post Office, or, you know, some of those big, big, big name corporations. So it's usually when the computers are connected by cable segment to a central hub. When the signal is sent from, from a computer, it's received by the hub, and it's transmitted down every other cable segment to all other computers. So we send that signal to the hub that's transferred all to all other computers on the network. And this is how, let's see, this is the star topology. So this is how the star topology is set up. So that's the star topology. All computers are connected at one location and requires a more intricate cable installation. So that is the star topology. So as I said, we have the star and then we have the bus. And then we have a ring topology. I have the no, we don't have the ring. I didn't do the ring, did I? Oh yeah, I did the ring. Here a ring and a mesh. Okay, then we have the ring. Then we had a ring topology. So basically these are networking setups of how your corporation will be receiving their information. In other words, you're doing you're working on a computer and you and your company may have a, a ring topology set up or star or mesh or bus. So this is a ring. So I did the, okay the bus and the star and this is the ring. Ring topology networks are created when a computer is connected directly to the next to the next computer in line. Forming a circle of cable, as a computer receives a signal, it either uh, it either it either acts on it or regenerates it and passes it along. Signals travel in only uh, one direction on the ring, so signals only travel in one direction on the ring. Token passing is one method of sending data in the ring. A small packet called token is passed around the ring to each computer. In turn, if a computer has the information, if, compu if a computer has information to send, it modifies the token as address information and data and sends it down the ring. When the packet is received by the intended destination, it returns a message to the sender indicating its arrival. A new token is then created by the sender and sent down the ring. So basically. These type of topologies, it just describes how uh, you're going to receive the information. In other words, when you're working on a computer, it depends on what type of topology your company has set up. That is the way you'll be receiving your information. So in other words, token passing. So token passing is the way that, one of the ways that a ring topology uh, receive their, uh, in other words, receive the information when you're working on. So this is the setup. This is a setup of the ring topology. So I'm, I'm not an artist, but you know, I try to draw it as best I can. Ring topology uses token passing. It can be wired wireless. You know, it can be wired as a star. It can be wired as a star also. So that's the ring topology. So we have the ring, the bus. Ring, the bus, and the star, and also we have a um, mesh topology. We have the mesh topology. So the mesh topology is the most fault tolerant, uh, but also the most expensive. It is created when each device in the network is connected to every other device in the network. So in other words, it's connected to every device in the network, the mesh. Uh, more cable and hardware is required. See, some of, them, some of these topologies that, you know, this is, because I took a course called networking, and we learned all about the star, the ring, the bus, the mesh, and um, it depends on the setup. 
you know, some setups you have, you need more cables. Some setups, in other words, uh, one wrong uh, cable, uh, one wrong cable hookup, then it messes up the whole network. Created when each device in the network is connected to every other device. More cable and hardware is required with the mesh. It's used in is using a wide area networking to ensure communication. Uh, so in other words, wide area network. In other words, you have more. In other words, you run in a company that you need more computers. You need you have uh, you say you have you have thousands of employees. You might need this mesh. You might need this mesh topology because this is uh that's the mesh topology. So in other words, you uh, it says um, costs are greatly increased because multiple connections exist to each device using a wide. So they need this in a wide area network. In other words, a wide area network. You have a a large building, a large corporation, uh, or you have more than one location, and you need you need this mesh setup. So it says uh, more cable and hardware is required with the mesh. So it depends on the, it depends on the company that you're working for. What type of topology topology they need? They do they need the mesh? Do they need the mesh or do they need the uh, bus? Do they need the star or do they need the ring ring topology? Ring topology. Ring topology. Uh, also, I had the what we call the star ring the star ring topology. You got the star ring topology. So basically, the star ring topology is probably a setup uh, that consists of the star and the ring. It's created when a network is wired as a star, but it is but the tr network traffic is handled as as in a ring. This allows for a single computer failure without affecting a uh, network. In other words, they can have a a, a single computer uh, failure. And it won't affect all the other computers that's connected to the uh, network. So you connect it to the network, you're trying to access access information just like everybody else. Um, so that is a star. And that's a star ring network. So this is a star ring network. So, you know, I'm not an artist, but I just try to draw these little networks. Uh, and, um, I think we're having that's it. Oh, I think no, here one more. Network layout. Okay, no, it's okay. Oh, here one, the last one is the star bus. The last one, then we also had a star bus. So in other words, we had the we had the star ring. And now we had the star bus. Okay, the star bus uh, topology combination of star and bus topology. So in other words, it's a combination of star and the bus. So, uh, connecting many star uh, hubs together along a bus backbone. Uh, a single computer failure effects, uh, effect on the network is minimized because of the star configuration. If a hub fails, the computer computers attached to it will not be able to communicate with other hub computers. Other hub computer connection uh, remain intact and communication continues. So this is the star. This is the star bus. So this is how a star bus is set up. In other words, you have your hubs. Your hubs are the devices that, um, in other words, those are, those are the devices that can transmit your data. So in other words, these are the wires. The wires go in a hub, and these are the computers that's connected. So in other words, it looks to me like uh, four computers connected to this hub, four computers connected to this hub, and four connected to this hub. So, okay, let's turn it off. Oh, yes, and see, look. I think this was the last one in class. This was the last one, so we had to stop. Uh, bus topology and that was the last one so now I want to since the lesson is finished okay what I want to do 
In other words, see, also have my greens. I can also take those and just put them on down in my um. Put them on down right on in my um. See, just take my greens and. So you take my greens and just throw it down in there and uh, but also last I have uh, I have my ginger ale I left in the freezer. Cheers to this lesson. I'm counting. So as I said, class, um, I, I mix my greens up in here. Cut my corn off. That should be done. So what I do, and then I have my uh, tacos. So as I said, when you're building an information system, that's the first uh, uh, thing I talked about when I started this lesson. In other words, you accompany your organization, you're building an information system, and you are, you know, you have to design, decide uh, how you want to build your information system. What type of information do you need to bring in? What type of business are you running? That's very important. What type of business are you running? So, you run in a business, you need, you need your information system. You need to build a system where you can bring in information because you want to learn about uh, your competitors. You want to. You want to keep up with. Uh, you want all information coming in. You need financial uh, uh, information. You need um, information about your suppliers, your manufacturers. Your. Uh, you need information. You might need information about the uh, from the IRS. You might need information from uh, managers. You might want to hire. You know. You might want to hire new staff. You need. You know. You might need information. You need information on trends in the market. I mean, you need you definitely need information coming in and out your corporation so you can keep up with the competitors and see what they're doing. So when you keep up with the competitors and what they are doing, so that's part of that. Why that is why it is important to build an effective and efficient information system. Okay, so class, uh, these are the tacos. I'm going to end on this note today, class, but I'm gonna show you. I do my tacos real quick. In other words, so in other words, class, uh, a little bit Sprite. Say it's a little bit of Sprite. So I just like to um, use my wine glasses when I'm drinking my Sprite. Cheers. Thanks for joining me today, class. Hope you enjoyed the lesson on building an information system. So we need an accounting information system. We are running an accounting. We're running. A, I'm running a CPA uh, firm. I need an I need an accounting information system. 
I need to bring in information. I need information from my competitors. I need I need information uh, not from them. But I might need some from them, but I might need something about them. I need trend. I need to know what's going on in the market. I need. I, I might want to test market a, a new product. Um, I might want to test market a new product and put it out there in the market just to see if it's going, if it's going to, uh, you know, how effective it is going, is it going to be. So what I do, see, I have my, In other words, uh, I have my taco, see, I just had my taco, and I put a uh, little corn on top, and my kidney beans, and my um, uh, spaghetti sauce, and, and it's a little hot right now, but cheers, and so I have, I have, um, oh, it's good. Well, sometimes I have a rings. Sometimes, and I have my um, see, I have my um, see, greens in there. I have my kidney beans, my cheese, and I melt it. Sometimes I just eat it right out of the bowl, like this, too. It's a little hot right now. A good. Mm -hmm. So, class, I want to say thanks for joining me today. Um, mm, look. So, try these. They're very delicious. Mm hmm. Tacos. So, I have my greens. See, I just mix my greens up in here. I got my greens in here, my kidney beans, my cheese. And my ragu sauce. Uh huh. Mm. It came out so good. And, but it's so hot. So, this is my taco. Yeah. Taco. Cheers. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Bring some corn. Uh huh. And class, I want to say thanks for joining me today. Cheers, and hope to see you back here. Same place, same time. I'm going to chow down on this lunch here. I'm going to chow down. It's a little early. It's uh, 11. Uh, no, it's, uh, oh, it's 12 o'clock. It's 12 o'clock. I'm right on time. Mm-hmm. Good. Mm -hmm. So, I'm going to say thanks for joining me today. And, I'm going to chow down. I'm going to chow down on your tacos. And, uh, very delicious. Mm -hmm. I'm going to thank you for joining me. And, hope you all have a good one. The rest of the day. And, I'll see you on my next video. And, uh, Mm -hmm. And you all have a good one. I went over time because it's over an hour. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you for joining me. Uh, I'll see you on my next video.
She is good tacos. Mm-hmm.